For a little ka chow! No. Ka chow! Ka chow! No, bid ya! Ka chow! Ka chow! Well, Deacon, ka chow! Ka chow! Okay, wow. <laughs> that was loud. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Jeff squishing his face <coughs> because he always squishes his face when I don't want him to squish his face. You're not the boss of me. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Foster the Meeple, a channel all about board games and board gaming things. Ciao! <laughs> and snapshots. We're here today to do. Ciao! <laughs> we are here today to do another episode of board game snapshots. Ciao! Oh, okay. There's no, it's not bajow. What it's is bajow. it? It's like ah, bajow. Ah, bajow. Anka jams. Ah, bajow. <laughs> that was for Max. Okay. Today we are going to be doing board game snapshots on five and a half slash five six games total that were voted on by our Patreon community. So thank you to our Patreons for voting on the games that we'll be covering today. In our board game snapshot videos, we do five smaller reviews. So it's not a full dedicated video. It's not as quick as it would be if we were doing it in a monthly wrap up. So it's just somewhere in between of all those things. Indubitably. Indubitably. The first game, and actually the one that was voted for the most, is a little game called Memoir 44, which we do own. Yes. But Jeff has driven it away to, to New Brunswick. As you're all aware, we're moving, or selling our house and moving. Yes. I have begun the process of transporting some games to our next location. Yes. And Memoir 44, I didn't think we were going to do content on before we moved. Yet here we are. And so I moved it, and it is no longer here. It's Memoir gone. 44. <laughs> Memoir 44 was sent to us from Asthma Day Canada, so yes. thank you to them for that. I have not played our physical copy because I want to paint it first. Mm -hmm. I'm very, very interested in painting all of the little tanks and things replicating World War II paint schemes. Memoir 44 is on beta on BGA, and Joe from the Discord mentioned this, and I said, can we pop into a game? I'd love to play it and learn it, and now I am obsessed. Memoir 44 is a really cool World War II-themed scenario-based board game. In Memoir 44, you're going to set up maps, scenarios that replicate situations that the Axis and Allies would have been in in World War II. For example, there is a scenario where the Allies are storming the beaches of Normandy. And I know about that. There's objective based things that happen in each scenario in order to score victory points. You know, maybe the Allies need to hold on to certain points for a turn that gives them a victory point condition. You can also get victory points just from um, eliminating enemy troops. Memoir 44 is played in two rounds. One player plays as the Allies. One player plays as the Axis, which is Germany. Victory points are cumulative over the two rounds. Ultimately, this is a card-driven dice roller. There's a lot of luck in this game, and if you don't like luck... Then you're out of luck. Then don't play it. <laughs> because ultimately the combat system is just rolling dice. There's situations that will allow you to roll more or less dice based off of range. Mm -hmm. It's very heavily driven by luck. I'm still learning this game, but I'm absolutely loving it. I'm a big history fan. I love World War II stuff. And this is a game that I'm going to, I think, dive down a deep hole with because there's a ton of content for this. Mm -hmm. This might become like a bit of a lifestyle game for me, especially when we move. I don't know how you're going to feel about it. Yeah, I haven't played it yet. Jeff has like three or four games going yeah. at a time with this on BGA, but mm -hmm. I haven't played it yet. So I don't know how mm -hmm. I feel about it yet. Mm -hmm. You did like Shores of Tripoli. I did. I do enjoy war games and I do enjoy games that have luck. <laughs> I think you you'll know what like I mean? it. So I think that I probably I do think would like you'll it. like it. I adore it. I've fallen fully in love. It might, might cool. I think there's enough content for this game that I'm just going to be like, yep, 
give me the next one. Yep, give me the next one. I'd also really, and I know this isn't the same game, but I'd love to try the Undaunted games as well. Yeah, I also want to try yeah. Undaunted. Let us know if you've played both Memoir 44 and Undaunted Normandy or whichever one. How do they compare? And what Undaunted is something like? I'm going to get. Yeah, eventually. we're going to get it. Um, mm-hmm. Your That's brother, uh, Jason, has mentioned that how good Undaunted is. So yeah. If you like war-themed games, if you're big into World War II stuff, you're you're going to be digging it. Yeah. So the next game that was voted for was Rear Window. And this is from Funko Games. And I don't believe this game is actually out yet, but it is it coming is. out yeah. soon. So we had the opportunity to play this game at GaggleCon with mm-hmm. Rodney, Christy, and Luke. And I loved it. I freaking fell in love with it. So essentially, Rear Window is based on an Alfred Hitchcock movie, Rear Window. It is a cooperative game where one person is playing as the director. And they're going to be sitting behind a screen, and they're the ones that are the clue giver. So think kind of like in Mysterium. Mm -hmm. This is a person who's trying to help you figure, solve the puzzle or figure out what happened. So in the game, you are essentially looking through your neighbor's windows trying to piece together who they are, what rooms they were in, rooms they were in. And there is also a component that can be added in, but it's not a guarantee every game that one of them may be a murderer. In that case, you're actually kind of working against the director a little bit because they don't want you to catch the murderer. Mm -hmm. So the clues that they're giving you, they're going to have a hand of cards, once again, very Mysterium like where they don't get to choose what cards they draw and they have to try and give the other people clues to guess the right people and not occupation, but let's just call it an occupation attribute. That's what it is Mm -hmm. in each room by handing out the cards or laying down the cards that they have in their hand in each room. So they're laying cards down to help you figure out what's going on. And on the other side of where the director is, is everybody else that's playing the game and you're working together to try and puzzle together who, like I said, who's in the room and what is their attribute and whether or not you believe there's a murderer. And that's essentially the game. It's played over four days. And by the end, you have to be able to correctly identify it's either all or at least three of the four. I personally love this kind of game. Like Mm -hmm. I love the deduction aspect of it. I love trying to figure out like trying to piece together what the clue giver is trying to tell you. And what I find really interesting about these games is just in general, like everybody approaches things in a different way. So Mm -hmm. like I'm looking at something thinking, oh, it's obviously this. And then maybe Jeff's looking at it and being like, no, I, I don't think that that's what he's trying to tell us. I think it's this thing. An example, one that we struggled with was was there's a few attributes. One is the klutz and one is the drunk. The drunk, yep. <laughs> and those two things can be very similar because the cards that Rodney was giving us had, some of them had alcohol in them. They all had a mess. So I was like, oh, maybe this person is a drunk and that's why the alcohol is in there and then they're knocking things over. But it ended up being the klutz and we did figure it out at the end. It's just fun, thematic. It's not a complicated game. No. Overall, I really enjoyed this game. I do think like if you don't like those types of deduction games, it is a little bit abstract in terms of definitely less abstract than like I keep referring it to it as Mysterium, but it's the closest game that we've played that's similar. One thing in our game, we didn't come across the murderer. That wasn't a thing. So it would be really interesting to see how that would work when the director is actually working against you. We kind of all discussed and weren't really sure whether or not that is an element of the game that's even needed, but we've only played it once. So yeah, cool that they have it. I just don't think that if it doesn't come up, it doesn't hinder the play of the game no i guess is kind of my point like if it comes up yeah i'm sure it'd be cool but the fact that a hidden traitor yeah if it if it doesn't then it's still cool so next up on our list we're actually going to be talking about two games that were sent to us for review from portal games so thank you to portal talking about them at the same time because they're from the same family Mm -hmm. oh they're from the same ohana and that is the detective series of games we have detective Batman. Everybody Lies, which is Batman. And then we have House Secrets, which is Dune. Mm -hmm. So we've played both of these. I don't want to get into comparing these because Mm. not really the point of this. But I would say that Dune plays better into the detective theme, I think, than Batman did. Mm. Just based off of the way Dune is written in the story of Dune. What I would say of both of these games is that pick whatever theme you like. 
if you prefer the Dune theme, go with Dune. If you prefer Batman, go with Batman because mm -hmm. they're very thematic in terms of the storyline that you're playing out. Yeah. Basically, in Detective, you are going to be A playing detective. as detectives. There is an app component to the Detective series to help you navigate these stories and uncover clues and secrets so that you can get you to your objective basically ask a series of questions mm -hmm. in order to complete the scenario like why did x person disappear Dude, in x place yeah where did they go who did it yeah essentially and you're doing this by going through card-based scenarios that you're reading to each other that might unlock future uh yeah. conversations or future uh, locations you can go to the one thing i'll say about Batman is it adds an additional thing into the game personal that you have personal goals. Mm -hmm. So Dune is very much completely cooperative. Batman has added a personal goal, goal component where not only are you trying to solve the overarching scenario, but you also have a personal goal in, ter in terms of trying to develop or yes. determine what that personal goal Which is. Which might then, when you're reading those cards and like trying to make decisions, it might make you be like, oh, no, I would really like to talk to mm. this person. But other people might not know that that's because that person is leading you to your personal goal, which could then be kind of leading you down a rabbit hole instead of getting you mm -hmm. more to the direct overall objective. But you want to solve both, mm -hmm. basically. There's a ton of text, a ton of story, a mm -hmm. ton of narrative. If you like cooperative, deductive reasoning, you will love these games. Yes. The one thing that I will say specifically for me, so I have not read Dune. I have not seen the movies. I know about Batman. I've seen almost all of the movies and all of that stuff. So it was a lot harder for me to connect with Dune House Secrets because I was struggling to understand what the names were, mm -hmm. what the places were. And so it's extremely <laughs> thematic. And that's what I was trying to allude to before. Yeah. I've read Dune. I was really into Dune more than Batman. Mm -hmm. And I was into Batman more than Dune. Because I've read Dune. I know all the family names. I've seen the movie. Mm -hmm. I knew everything that was going on. And I was like, oh yeah, I know who that person is. Oh, uh, that makes sense. Yeah. Really, when I say gravitate towards the one that the theme makes the most sense for you, because it's going to enhance the experience that Definitely. much more. Definitely. And yeah. within the games, they come, they each come with four different characters that you can play. In Dune, the characters that you choose at the beginning are the ones you have to play throughout mm -hmm. the entire game. Whereas in Batman, you can switch it up. Each character does have somewhat asymmetrical abilities. It's nothing too extreme. Like no. it's n It doesn't complicate the game at all. It might just let you go down a different talk path with a yep. certain person or, or event yeah. or whatever. I will say one thing. There is a lot of reading mm -hmm. in these. So if that is not something that you're into, there is an app, but it's not reading you the story. There is a lot of it's a lot to remember. Uh, actual deduction in yes. this game. There's a lot of reading and writing and being like, okay, what was that thing? What was that conversation? Looking at notes, like yeah. having a notepad. This is as like close to an actual detective game that I've played. You know, if we're c considering Chronicles of Crime and mm -hmm. all of these things, like this is actual like, Wait, what was that person saying? Yeah, two, why have I heard that name two before? Two conversations before. Look, look, look at your notes. Mm -hmm. Very much deduction. So those are the detective games. Next up, voted on from our Patreon community is Unmatched Robin Hood versus Bigfoot. So we love Unmatched. That's what I'm going to start off by mm -hmm. saying. I now want to own all of them. For anybody who doesn't know, Unmatched is like a 1v1 battler. Each person is going to be in charge of one of the characters. Obviously in this set, it's Bigfoot and Robin Hood. I was Bigfoot and Jeff was Robin Hood. And each of the characters also have allies with them. So Bigfoot had a jackalope and Robin Hood had the Merry Men, Merry I assume. Men, yeah. You're going back and forth, attacking each other, moving, doing skills until you knock one person out. And then whoever is left standing, wins. Now the only other unmatched that we played, Cobble and Fog, we played as Dracula Sherlock and Holmes. Sherlock Holmes. So this is the only other set that we've played. And I would say in terms of like, I feel like not more complicated, but just totally different play styles so for this one. Some people were mentioning about how like Bigfoot is super overpowered. Bigfoot actually lost. By uh, one. By one. I could see why people are saying that because in our game, the reason why Bigfoot is overpowered is because there's so many faint cards. Yeah. Which basically nullifies the attack. Yeah. Jeff's like, I attack <laughs> and I say, no, you don't. I had gotten Jamie down 
significantly in health. And I was like, this is a breeze. Yeah. I made a and mistake then, at the beginning. And then all of a sudden, Jamie started playing all these faint cards and it was one turn and it was down. She died. I had one health left. Yeah. My attack cards were like six strength, mm -hmm. which you just can't defend against. Yep. We love, love it. Mm -hmm. Love it. I am so excited to get all of them to start mixing and matching. I do think that this pairing in particular is really interesting because Robin Hood has ranged attacks and Bigfoot only does melee, no range. Yeah. So he's got to get right up next to you, which makes him a little bit more vulnerable. Robin Hood's trying to make sure that he's still within range, but far enough away that Bigfoot can't get to him. So it's a, it's really puzzly mm -hmm. between them. And I really enjoyed this set. The really cool thing that I always harp on about Unmatched that I love is how they've done range. Mm -hmm. Range in Unmatched is actually defined by the type of terrain type terrain you are type, standing yeah. on. The map is kind of divided by a bunch of different terrain types. And basically, if you are in the same color-coded terrain region as the other character, they're within range. I think that is so ingenious for how confusing some other games make range. It's so simple. It's so smart. I just love it. I'm so excited to keep playing. I really, really enjoy this game. Yeah. It's just an easy one. It doesn't take a lot of setup. We will definitely be getting more. I mean, it's, it is a great series of games. Now, the very last game that our Patreon community voted on was a party game that we actually don't own but have played quite a few times. Yeah. When to go buy it because the last time we were at Boardroom Game Cafe, the last time before the last time, it was on the shelf. And I was like, should we get that? And I was like, ah, I don't know. We don't really have like a party group to play with. But then we went back and I was like, nope, I'm getting it. And guess what? Gone. 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 <laughs> that is So Clover. So I'm sure a lot of you have heard about So Clover because it is a super popular party game. Mm -hmm. We were able to play it at Dice Tower West. Mm -hmm. We have played it at GaggleCon. played with Rodney, Christy, and Luke. Mm -hmm. And I feel like we've played it one other time. It is a cooperative game where everybody is given four cards. On each, it's a little square. And then on each side of the square, there's a different word. You shuffle them up and you're trying to, you put them in your little clover. And then you have to think of a word that makes the two words connect. Connect somehow. But but then once you've done that and you write them on your little clover, everybody gets dealt an extra card mm -hmm. and then they shuffle them up and then one of the clovers goes in the middle at a time and then the five cards will go out. And then the rest of the group has to try and figure out which card goes into which slot and which words you were trying to connect. In which orientation, yeah. Which is a lot harder it's, than you would think. It definitely is because again, like I have a bad tendency of not looking at all the words and so I'll be like, gun and werewolf. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'd put silver. silver. But then there's another card that says like coin. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. it gets very confusing. And then people, it's just, it's so interesting to see how people deduce your thought processes, which are yes. completely different. Yes. I think this trumps just one for me. Mm-hmm. It's up there with Doodle Dash. Because like what's really cool about it is that fifth card that gets thrown in and you have no idea the yeah. words that are going to be on it. It could and be it, the worst thing for it you. It could be the worst thing for you. And then you have to sit there in silence, listening to people, try and figure out why you did what you did. And you're trying so hard to just be like, no, <laughs> wrong, but you can't say anything. That's when I'm always sitting there in silence and someone will be like, oh, well, he... He put silver because of coin or he put silver because of old age or something. And I'm like, yeah. oh my God, I didn't even, I didn't even think of that. There was a really <clears> good <throat> example. We were all like back and forth about in our last game. We're like, would he think Sm of it oh, that so way? It was smallpox in America. Yeah. I wrote blanket because smallpox blankets are what brought smallpox to America and none, no one could get it. They came very close to it, yeah. but they couldn't. They couldn't get it. Didn't know what the heck he was talking about, basically. It is a bit more brain burning than just one. Definitely. It could be one of those games where unintentionally somebody could make you feel dumb. Yeah, that's fair. It's right? a fair point. It depends on the group that you're playing with, as does every game. But like, as in like, why would you put that? Why wouldn't you write this? What I would <laughs> say about So Clover is that it's definitely more susceptible to having a bit of a dingus around the table. 
yeah. than just one. Just be mindful of that. But again, that's that's a game group problem. Yeah, that's not, not, not a game, game problem. problem. I'm susceptible to that. I do not like to feel dumb in games. I haven't felt dumb in So Clover, but mm-hmm. that's product of playing with really good people around the table. Exactly. Those are the five games, or I should say six games. We kind of combined mm-hmm. the two detective games, but those are the six games that we had to talk about today. We we're really interested in knowing down below if you've played any of these games, what you think about them, if you like them or if you don't like them that's basically what i already just said if you are interested in buying games like any of the many that we mentioned today you should first start by checking your friendly local gaming store and for us here in halifax that is boardroom game cafe yeah it is we love it that's where so clover was and then so clover wasn't there anymore it was very sad that's all we have for you guys today thank you so much for watching if you like what you see please subscribe we hope to see you again soon and now we say goodbye goodbye later it is Hello everyone and welcome back to Foster Jesus Murphy. <coughs> that was a forced one. It w- F off, man. F off, man. Six, those are all for Joe and that's going to be too loud. We're going to have to cut that one or I'll just I'll just make it littler. Things. <laughs> you know, I don't know what right. they're called.